Marie Miao, social worker at the Ho Cancer Center as well as the art coordinator. And today I'm excited to have Shelly again um, for our marble painting class today from Craft Light and Studio over in Long Beach. So I will hand it over to you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Thank you for having me back. I'm excited to have another creative experience with you. And so today we're going to be doing acrylic pour painting or in my uh, studio I usually call it marbling painting because of the effect that happens when we get done with it. So I'm excited. I know you're going to be just so happy with the way it turns out. I'm going to go through your materials as always. So let's take them out and let's first start with your craft sticks. Now, I don't have sticks here because we don't really need them, but you all have sticks at home because you're going to need to stir your paint up a little bit when we start to pour. Your paints, everybody got four paints. Now you at least got two colors and a black paint and a white paint. I want to talk a little bit about your paint in a moment, but first let's go through the rest of your materials. You have four bowls and a drip pan. So these plastic bowls are going to be perfect for you to put your paints in. And then you have a drip pan, nice drip pan because like you see already I have a lot of paint in mind because I was doing this yesterday enjoying myself. And so you're going to want to have somewhere with the paint to go as it flows off the canvas. So let's go back to the paint. So in your paint, the way acrylic pour works is that you need the paint to move. And so in acrylic pour, we like to use a medium. And in your kits, you all heard that you're going to get a medium. But what we've done is that we've included the medium inside of the paint. So if you've got one, you know, everybody should have an Artisa paint brand that already has the medium built into the paint color. And so in if you don't have it, everyone has like a basic black. This also has medium. You know, what happens is when you have medium on the canvas, any color, it's going to be medium for all the colors. So you don't really have to be like, oh, I don't have medium this one. It's okay. What the medium does, a little goes a long way. So as you're pouring the paint on your canvas, it's going to affect all the colors on the canvas to just move and flow. And that's what we want. In pouring, we want it to move and flow, which is why we have it in the paints already. Also, you know, I don't want you thinking that I only can pour with medium. You can pour with water too. So what I've done today is I want to give you an idea of what you're going to be working with and how it's kind of a possible way it's going to look and an alternative way so in case you want to practice more at home. So like I said, you all have medium in your paint. And what happens is that paint, and so most of my colors we gave out to you guys, so you see a nice black and white visual here. And it's awesome still. You see this is medium effect here. What happens is that that medium and the color, they go onto the canvas and they move. So I'm gonna teach you guys today, I'm gonna guide you through a process on how to tilt your paint so that it can move on the canvas. You see I only have two colors here, but the way they connect and the blending, that's the medium doing its thing. But you also notice that you don't have any too much bleeding of colors because the medium protects the color, it keeps its hue. So you have that integrity still intact when you put the medium on. And we like this. You see big, bold blocks of color here. It's still a beautiful aesthetic look. That's the medium effect. Well, like I said, if you don't have medium, you can do it with water, which is what I teach in the studio. Sometimes, you know, the water is just as good, sometimes it's not. So I'm going to give you a word of caution here. This is what it looks like with the water. The difference here is you see a little bit more blending, you see a little bit more watercolor effect, and there's still a lovely look. If you like this look, you can do it too. However, a little bit of water is all you need. What I usually teach in the studio, if you choose to go this route without the medium, you're looking at a five to one ratio five tablespoons of paint to one tablespoon of water in each of your cups, and I'm going to teach you about those cups in a moment. But that's how you'll want to create the, the prep for it so that you can put them onto the canvas and they won't bleed in so much. All right, so I've given you two ideas here. Again, I wanted to explain that little piece about your paint because maybe some of you were curious about how we were going to go about it today. So now let's take a look at the technique. So in acrylic pour painting, there's a few ways you can do it. You've probably been online and you've seen, uh, I don't know, you've seen resin, all those different types of pouring. Uh, so today we're gonna do what's called a clean pour. And a clean pour is really when you're using just individual colors. We're gonna use them in our bowls here, and I'm gonna get mine out. Individual colors of paint. We're gonna pour them independently onto our canvas, and then we're going to create the marble. We're gonna create the tilt. 
You could do what's called a dirty pour, where you just use one cup and you put all of your colors together, layering them up. You know, your black, your white, maybe your, your green, and uh, maybe your yellow. And you put them all in and you pour it on the canvas. That's dirty pour. And then there's the Dutch pour, which you probably have seen, which I also love too. It's when you're using maybe like a, the blow dryer. And you can move in that blow dryer. You've seen, you've seen it before. You move that blow dryer to move the paint on the canvas. That's also another way you could do it. Every, you know, whatever technique you want, the more practice you have around it, uh, the greater your art, you know, the greater your skill. And so, but today I'm going to teach you and we're going to go through the clean pour. Again, I like the clean pour simply because I like just the way it is clean. You know, when you're, as you're going to be applying it with me today, with Maria and I, we're going to, you're going to see how the manip manipulation of your colors goes onto your canvas. How you place it is really how you're going to guide it to move. And it's how you create the, the scene that we have here in the black and white. So all of this placing it in moments. So as we go through, I'll be talking about how to place you know, if I place a little bit here, you see some drips here because I literally dropped clean drops onto the canvas. So are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get going. Let's go first. We're going to take out our paint and each of your bowls should be out now. So go ahead and pour one color of paint in each of your bowls. And Marie and I have gloves, so I'm going to put my gloves on. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna have a black. I'm gonna pour my black inside. I'm gonna get that ready. There we go. I'm just gonna pour all of that into my bowl. I know, huh? The safety uh, hard, features here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know nothing is dripping from those paint bottles. And they, they traveled well. Okay, there we go. Okay. okay, so yep, we're doing this with you guys. So I'm I guess you guys are peeling off <laughs> as well. Okay, I got my white together, so I'm doing a white. You know, I had so much fun doing this black and white painting yesterday that I was like, I could do two more, because I could have a nice set, right? I will have a lovely set, because what happens, the way you did it yesterday is not the way you're going to do it today. It's going to look different, and it's going to be awesome. Imagine if I packaged this, you know, to some, you know, gave it to some loved ones. You could frame these, and, you know, you can frame canvases really well. They have great opportunities to package or frame them at Michael's or any of your, your framing stores. Should we be pouring out the whole bottle? Mm -hmm. okay. You're going to pour out the whole bottle, guys, into your bowls. Oh, I just want to do... Maybe I'll try the screen here. I want to... Hmm. Actually, guys, I decided to add some green. So maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll do two black and whites and a green black and white. Again, you have four colors, so you're going to do, you know, your two colors. Or you might just want to save two and just do like I did and, you know, do your black and white or just keep it the two colors or even three colors. You know, really, it's your choice. It's your art. So you get to choose how it's going to look and what the colors go into are going to be. So match it to your taste. And I'm actually going to pause there and just do my three colors for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got silver. Very nice. Oh, yeah. So, so Marie pretty. is working with a silver, white, and black. Okay. You're do it, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna just keep it there. Yeah. All right. So clean pour. So I want to start with. So the way we layer our colors is is does make a difference, right? Because when we tilt, when we actually do our 
are tilting and that's how we're going to create the we're going to be able to have it move on the canvas we actually have to lift it and move it and it's just that's the part of the art that's so much fun uh, but how you place your colors does make a difference so i actually want to see my white so i'm going to pour a little bit of my white first and again a little goes a long way i'm not going to pour a bunch of white i just probably maybe a little dollop i want to see some of my green so i'm going to pour my green on top here and maybe just a little bit okay so you can go large medium small a little bit more and then I'm going to add my black oh, it looks I don't want to get on the table and with the black careful with the black as you saw in my black and white that black is black so you really want to make sure you use it you know sparingly so now I'm just going to do a little bit of a dot just a little bit for now I might do more later okay. and we're going to pick up our canvas up and over your drip pan, begin to let it move. Ooh, let it stretch, let it run. But there mm. it goes, mm, I wanna go this way. How about that? Let's see what that looks like. And again, it's exploring. What does it look like if I do this? What does it look like if I do this? You need to learn the technique so you understand how you want it. And then you're gonna commit to a certain way. Do you see the white, you see the green, and you see the black? I love that, and that's what I'm going for. The more you tilt, you can see the colors are going to either get smaller or less seen, and some are larger as that paint expands. And what's really happening is that medium is expanding that paint. And I'm good here, okay, everyone? So this is where I'm gonna pause on this first pour. Now we get to do it again, all right. <laughs> Let's do some more, oh, exciting. Now what do I wanna do? I like the white, I like the white. I'm gonna actually come from the top. So you, your goal is to cover the canvas. So how you cover the canvas is really up to you. But what I like is that I, find up, I don't really start from the bottom to the top. Sometimes I'll start in the left bottom to the top right. You know, I just really wanna go where I want to go. I'm going to leave out the green this time because I have quite a bit of green and I'm going to do a little bit more black. Okay. And so I want my green to kind of complement this canvas piece. So here we go. And I'm going to move it. Ooh, here we go. It's going to be pretty. So this is one of those experiences where you just got to have some time. If you just are looking for some time, this is definitely a, a creative experience where you could pass time with. You see, you got to be a little patient and that's, you know, let that medium do its thing and move. But again, you're covering the canvas. It's not going to happen in 10 minutes. So really explore your art. I'm going to do my third pour. Again, I like to start with the white as background. And I liked my, let me see, let me try this. How about this? I'm gonna do black and I'm gonna do green this time. We haven't seen that yet. I'm tilting. So again, how you pour it does create the character on the scene here, and that's what we want. And you really are just, you're just kind of in a, in a state of wonder, like what's gonna happen if I, and that's a fun place to be. Mm. Mm. 
this is yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's coming out nicely. I wanted to, I was like thinking about it. I'm like, I need to peek over there <laughs> and see what I'm, I thought I'd happening. be bored with two colors, but I actually no. really love the simplicity yeah. of it. Yeah. Let me see if I do, I'm going to do black. Everybody, here goes my fourth pour. I was letting that run. And at this point, I really haven't had too much paint on my canvas to let it drip, and that's okay. You know, as much as I can move my canvas um, around, left, right, up, down, and keep the paint from dripping so I can make most of all of it. But again, if you like the painting, the way it's going, and you just don't want to move it anymore, let it drip. Okay, guys, so this is mine so far. So I see black here. I have a lot of white block here. I actually like this amount of green. I might put some more, but I've decided I don't want the whole thing to be too greened out. So I'm going to probably put more black and white on this canvas. I actually want to see more white here, and I want to see maybe a little bit more black on top. So the way I do that, again, clean pour lets you be able to just position your paints the way you'd like to see them on your canvas. So I'm going to drip a little bit on my black here, just a little bit. And, oh yeah, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And I'm going to move it. Okay. On top here, we'll be adding some black. So does it finish like this or do you have to coat it with something after we're done. You can coat it with a varnish. Okay. That is, it brings out the sheen. Definitely, if you want it to gloss a little bit more. Polyurethane also works. You want to wait at least a good two to three days to make sure that paint is completely dry so you don't uh, manipulate or you don't interrupt the painting. And like I said, these are beautiful when they're finished. These, these are easy to frame. This would be such a fun project to do with kids or oh, yeah. grandkids too Absolutely. with the holidays coming up. Exactly. When the kids are just, you know, wanting what to do yeah. time off. The kids, yes. I mean, of all ages, I want to say it doesn't matter, you know, how old you are. I've had them all in the studio and they, this is probably one of my most popular <laughs> crafts or projects that we've done. It's just, I mean, this is what we do. You know, the conversations that happen over this particular experience, I mean, I, they've been very lively, lots of fun, insightful. So as you start to see it coming together, let me see, I will do maybe some white here in my corner. I did this with some kindergartners not too long ago, a bunch of six-year-olds and um, we did a small workshop for them um, during their class time, and it turned out. I mean, again, you just it, everyone's creative, and so as long as you're able to explore your creative self through the paint, you know that's the goal here. Is there like a maximum amount of paint colors that 
you mm -hmm. recommend? That's yeah. I do recommend no more than four. Okay. Which is yeah, no more than four. And I always recommend to have at least you know, a white. Um, again, I like the background. If you want to do a black, that's fine too. The base color is always you know preferred. And just to coat the canvas. So again, you would not, I mean, if you're looking at this now, had we included more wa or water, you would not have this color blocking the way we have it now with the medium. But you definitely would still have a marble swirl, quote unquote, effect. But you wouldn't see these big blocks of color like you would with um, the medium. Remember, the medium keeps the integrity of the colors from bleeding in too much because you don't see a lot of gray, which is usually what we expect with black and white because of the medium. And this is mine, guys. This is where we're going here. Does the effect look the same when you do that, um, when you pour in all of the colors into one cup? You know, in the dirty pour, if you're using medium, you will have color blocking just the same. However, sometimes when it happens with dirty pour is that you'll lose maybe a color you like. You mm. know, it gets lost in the actual cup as you pour and you end up using probably more color of paint than you would expect because you're trying to make up for what you don't see. And so, which is another reason why, again, I like the cleans because I can always, if I want to see my color, I know where I want to put my color. If this were a Dutch pour, I mean, you, you would see like that celestial, you know, blur of paint, you know, that looks really pretty again also. Um, but that's because of the blow dryer. And if you have any questions throughout your process, feel free to type it in the chat box. So you might be, I'm about maybe three-fourths almost finished with the front of my canvas. So what might happen though is I still want to add some detail to my edges. So I'll tell you how to do that. We are going to give those attention. And so by now you're probably seeing your edges are starting to have some color and some drip on them also. And so we're gonna sh I'm gonna talk to you about how you want to use that to your advantage. Again though, if you're gonna frame it, it doesn't matter, but if you aren't, you can still make them really nice. You're gonna notice that with the medium, the paint does eventually stop. And so that it's about the drying effect now. And so again, go ahead and continue your method, your technique. I have a few spots here that need to be covered um, that I want to add paint to. 
With the water, that's not so. The water will continue to move for a moment because it's just simply it's what water does. With the medium, though, it locks in. I'm like, you're gonna have my, this is, yeah. yeah. Looks like we have. I tell you, I hope you guys are all nicely covered at home. <laughs> you might walk out of here with some paint in your hair like sometimes I do when I do this. <laughs> A Dutch pour is when we're using uh, the blow drying effect. Um, so it's when we're adding the paint in this you know fashion, and you move the paint through with a, with like a blow dryer, uh, air compressor. Uh, it's it's using your your air, right? So when we're doing the Dutch pour, and that would be yeah. Explore the different techniques, you know, see which one you prefer. But again, you could do this. Um, Right now you're doing as a clean board, but if you choose to do it again and you want to grab a blow dryer, uh, that'd be great to see how it turns out on your end. There's certain, yes, there are certain pouring dryers, but you can't easily just use a basic dryer. And again, I'm pouring. I hope you all have a surface where you can make some mess. <laughs> So using your craft sticks, now you're probably at a point where you see little moments like these, um, like at the bottom, I don't have it covered. Um, there might be a spot at the very top, and you may not be, you don't want to put too much paint down, but you want to put paint down. That's when your craft stick can come in handy, and or if you can lightly brush with your hand, sometimes I do it that way. Um, if that's it, it does not, it's not going to hurt it. You still have a lovely piece of art, but just so you know, because sometimes that paint doesn't get as far as we want it to travel. But the craft sticks are helpful for that. I did a little bit, a little but bit. it's hidden. Yeah. <laughs> I see like little pieces of, look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long do these typically take to dry? About, and you know, this one here that I did yesterday is dry. So it took about 24 hours. 24 hours, Yeah, okay. using the medium, guys, the paint will dry faster. Um, if I was doing it with the water, I would probably give it a little longer. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then once it's dry, you would cover with varnish if you wanted yeah, to. Yeah, right. I would wait an extra day or so just to make sure that my paint is dry because I don't want it bleeding. Right. The varnish will, will tack on to the paint um, and the canvas, so you want to make sure that paint is intact. Otherwise, you'll start to, as you start to move the varnish, you'll see the paint move, and that means it wasn't dry enough. Mm. Yeah. There's also, if you, um, we have varnish, you know, uh, the spray varnish you can buy, that's a light spray. Like Krylon has a really nice, you know, gloss spray. 
You can find that at your Michaels. Or Hobby Lobby, which whenever you prefer. Okay, so I see you working those edges. All right, the edges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so your edges, guys, I get mine here a little, you know, they get a little messy here, but it's really pretty here. So what do I want? You know, you can use your drip pan to simply dip. If you have room, if you're painting your dip pan, that's an option I always give people is to dip the sides of their canvas into that. And you can still get some of that swirl in there. You can use your craft stick. Mine is like glued in here. You can use your craft stick. Go ahead and stick it into those colors like we had. And you can just simply dot your edges. If you still have paint left, again, you can pour that into your pan. You know, so again, I'm giving those so three ways I've given you so far, pour them into your pan. Go ahead and dip the edges into your pan. Clean pour in your pan and dip like you see I'm redoing. Use your craft stick or you can just simply smooth it out with your finger. So it's almost like stamping. For some of you, you probably have so much drip, you don't need to do that part. But if you didn't have your drip go over, you might want to um, add that. Do you recommend that we try our best to stay away from paint brushes and just stick with the craft? I stick? do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you should just to really, um, again, we're going for a swirl marble effect. Um, paint brushes definitely add a different aesthetic to your piece, and so um, practice with pouring. You know, like I said, you probably won't be able to pour. May not go into every nook and cranny on your canvas, and that's what the sticks are for to help. But if you can. Just get into just um, the practice of you know how much paint to apply. Um, you'll start to learn how much you want on your canvas to go the certain direction you'd like it to go in. You won't need um, too much of the sticks after a certain point. Okay. I think sometimes when you have a paintbrush in your hand, you focus too much on the techniques yeah. and skills versus enjoying the process, so. That's a good point, this is true. That's true, we are a little bit more. You know, this one's definitely more free, and paint brushes are definitely free, but this one allows you to have a little bit more um, autonomy. You're allowed to, you don't see your mistakes in this one. 
If you ever had, if you made a mistake, nobody would ever know. And you probably, like me at home, you, you can't help but keep going, even though it's, it's <laughs> more than done. <laughs> but it's just so much fun to do. Uh, again, the more paint you apply, the longer it's going to dry. Although this medium, it, it does harden um, and it has a drying effect to it, so you don't need to wait too long. But I totally understand if you have not stopped yet, just like me. But this is the end of our experience today. I hope you had a great time. I believe you did. I trust that all is well. Um, again, feel free, please, let us know what your pictures looked like. Uh, if you took any, any after photos for us when you're finally finished, that'd be great to see. Uh, thank you for having me. Again, I'm Shelly with Craft and Light. I'll see you guys next, in, next year. Yeah, um, we have Shelly coming back next February, so we have um, a lot of our classes going on throughout next year as well. Um, next month we have our calligraphy and airbrush uh, for beginners, so we're, I'm excited to have um, another instructor come and teach you that, so we'll be you know, doing calligraphy on holiday cards and ornaments to get you ready for the holiday. So um, please uh, watch out for the e-blast um, email for that so you can register. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye, everyone. All right. All right.